Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is John and Jenna from Flippin' Ain't Easy, and happy Friday to everyone. Uh, I may may look like hell today, but uh, just got through playing a little golf with a friend from out of uh, town, so uh, it is what it is, right? That's, uh, you know, 20 years ago, no problem. Now, it's like uh, anything tires me out. But uh, this time of year, you know, I'm not playing golf, but uh, weather is getting better for you guys right now. And uh, for a lot of you guys out like the Midwest, North, Northeast and that type of thing. And uh, that means one thing. That means yard sale season. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of times I talk uh, to people who are just having problems, you know, winning at the reselling game. And it, it starts from the top. And that is how you source. Uh, so, you know, don't buy bad. You know, that's why I say and it wasn't a mis mispronunciation in the title. Um, sort of like breaking bad. Well, don't buy bad. And um, you want to buy good, not bad. And uh, there's there's a sort of an art to it. And I want to talk to you about uh, that here. Now, before we begin, I want to um, thank everyone who's here with us right now in the chat. Uh, we'll probably have over 100 people like we normally do, which is quite awesome. Uh, if you're with us, put your questions and comments in the chat. And um, you know, if you're watching after the fact and you couldn't join us, well, sorry, you couldn't make it. Um, please comment down below. And no matter how you're watching it, hit that like button. That's really uh, what helps push the uh, the live stream out, out to others. And uh, I think that's why, you know, when we hit, start hitting the like button and, uh, you know, we start getting like 120, 130, 140 people because YouTube is notifying other people and letting them know that we're having a live stream. So that's pretty cool. Um, but no, no matter... Uh, you know, if you hit it once, you hit it twice. Um, we have a thing where, and this is kind of a thing that works for a lot of people here that that watch the program. If you hit the like button, chances are you're going to get a sale within the next 24 hours. And and for some, it's like immediately. So I don't know why. It just maybe putting it out there, putting good vibes out there. But hit that like button, and uh, uh, hopefully that'll that'll get you guys going. For me, sales have been, you know, really good the last couple of days. And then like today, it knew I was away for a few hours and it's like nothing. So uh, I did a uh, end item and sell similar on my main store. And uh, I think there's once you do that, it kind of puts things on hold for a little while and then the sales will start coming in. So I'm pretty confident that's going to work. Um, so back to the, the soapbox here and just to get us started with the topic, it's kind of what we do in these lives. We uh, I, I try to figure out, well, you know, what can I talk about that I really haven't spoken about before? And today, you know, I think it's important that, you know, a lot of us put bad stuff in our stores. And, you know, the moment you go out to a yard sale, you kind of feel like you go through stuff. You kind of feel obligated to yourself to buy something, you know, buy something to uh, or to resell. And um, I mean, many of you guys have niched down, so it's not that big of a deal. You, you guys pretty uh, are pretty um, uh, disciplined when it comes to what you buy. But your everyday sellers like myself, and I, I kind of get into that mode too, where I kind of feel like, you know, I want, I don't want to leave the yard sales empty-handed, you know, and and maybe I only have a handful of yard sales to go to. And the last thing you want to do is go out and waste the day and not bring anything home to put up online, but. That's kind of a, a trap if you think that way, because you, now you're buying stuff because you kind of feel like you need to, and then you, uh, you're you buying stuff that's really kind of marginal. And so when you buy bad, I mean, you can buy something for two bucks and still shouldn't be buying it. Um, you know, looking at the comps, I think is so important. And the only time you really shouldn't be looking at the comps is if you've bought enough of a particular item, you're uh, maybe niched out, niched out, or you just have so much experience buying a certain item, uh, but don't rely on, you know what, I bought this five years ago, it'll sell because what sold five years ago and what it sold for may not, have, you know, it may be totally different market for that item. So don't be afraid. And I think a lot of resellers just don't feel right when they bring their phone and, you know, pull up the, uh, the eBay comps right then and there. And yeah, the, the seller at the yard sale is probably going to think, okay, this person's probably trying to resell it. You know, some people do, but you know, they don't know if they're, you're on the phone with aunt Thelma. Maybe you found, you know, uh, something that she might like, um, you know, it's really none of their business either. You know, if you're on your phone looking at an item, 
uh, maybe you're taking a photo of it because maybe your wife or husband or significant other maybe would like that. And you're trying to make sure that that's what they want before you make an offer for it. So, um, and I know that some people feel like you're kind of being penalized sometimes by sellers at yard sales because you're buying stuff to resell. But again, it's none of their business. Uh, now, if you're like me and you show up with a camera strapped to you, the, you know, you probably, you know, the gig is up. But um, if you have, sorry about that, we're not having an earthquake, just this table. So if, uh, you know, you're at a yard sale, you just got to make sure that what you're buying has sold comps. Now, it's not enough to have one sold comp. You know, when you're looking at the sold comps, got to realize uh, that's the last 90 days. So if you have one uh, sold item in the last 90 days, that's not necessarily good or bad. You want to look at how many people are currently selling that item. Maybe that's sold once in the last 90 days, but nobody's selling that item. I mean, it's just such a rare thing. And uh, that's a good item to pick up. But on the flip side of the coin, if you have one sold and you have, you know, 20 listings of that item, uh, well, what's that say? That says that you're going to have some high competition and you may not move that item for a while, if at all, and you better get a good price for that. So when I source, I pass on a lot of things that I see have sold kind of like that because uh, it's kind of like, yeah, it's a one-off. It's sold here twice in the last 90 days, but um, really there's a lot of competition and Unless I can get that item for a good, good price, I'm talking like where I get 10x plus my money, uh, I'm not interested in picking that up. So it's very important that you also look at your competition, how many items are already being put up for that, uh, that, that item uh, on eBay and how many versus how many have sold. So maybe 20 items that you're up against, maybe it's sold 10 times in the last 90 days. That's pretty decent. Um, just know that it's not an iPhone, it's not an iPad type of uh, thing where it's going to fly out the shelf with those kind of numbers. You really have to have an item that has multiple upon multiple solds to be something that's going to be strong, like uh, you know, like an iPhone to really know you're going to move it in the next 48 hours. And that's kind of the thing. Yard sales, you're going to have people that are just getting rid of stuff they don't want, and chances are it's not really that good, good, good stuff. And that's kind of what we go for is the good stuff. And maybe you're only limiting your buys to those things and that's fine. But, um, you know, if you're only going out to a bunch of yard sales and getting two items for your week, that's a problem as well. So you want to make sure you're getting good buys. And, uh, you know, as far as the bad buys, the questionable buys you're, you're passing on. So sorry, honey, everyone's talking about I, yourself. <laughs> I know, but you know, this is what we do. We start know, the show off They're... first few minutes. Hey, hey John, let Jenna say hello. Jenna, okay. Jenna zoning out. Say hello. <laughs> that's what it is. You guys. Hi, know guys. I hope you guys are all having a great week or have had a great week. Um, we had a really good week, I think. A um, couple of slower days, but we had overall, we've had a good day. Or a good week. Yeah, today is kind of funky. I don't know what's going on. I mean, it just like it's it cold, knows. It's cold. It's ugly out. It's windy. It's, I don't know. Yeah, it was kind Whatever. of a cold side I'm ready today. for spring, though. I, I could go for about 60 degrees, 70. Mm. That would be ideal. No, no, because the, the moment it starts warming up, you know that that 110, 115, well, 20 yes, I know, degree heat is I coming. Wanna, I don't want to go there yet because that creeps up on us really quickly. So um, now that I know you guys are tired of hearing me, let's see who is in the house today. We have Mark Suddick. We have Rosie Games, uh, Jim Harden, Victor Wawiorka, Keen is in the house, uh, No One Designed 2, Truman Lost in Time, Picker, Art Betzhold, Only Cool Stuff, Tony Resells, Jackie, uh, is that Blechner? Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Hawthorne from Lakeland, Florida, Tommy Bernard, Podcast, and uh, more and more. So Silver Hair Stacker and Gail Carlson. So thank you guys for joining us today. Um, hopefully you guys have some pretty good Q&As. It's uh, end of the week. Uh, hopefully uh, your weekend plans are, uh, you know, uh, looking good. I, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to maybe get up in the morning and hit some sales uh, locally here. Um, we have Mark Suddick says, hi, John and Jenna. I hope all is well with you both. Uh, hi, everyone. And hit that like button now and you'll get a sale. That's right. We got Rosie Mark Games. Knows. 
Hey, John and Jenna, great videos this week. As always, Jenna and I hope you're feeling better. John, the voice sounds like it's back. Hi, everyone. Oh, it's back. All right. The voice is kind of back, but it's weird. It's like I, I have this ringing in my ear. It's like, a little pitchy. Yeah. But, but <laughs> you know, I have like this. It's really weird. Like I'm listening to music and like the musical instruments are off. So something's not right. But, you know, hopefully things will improve here pretty soon. Um. Jim Harden says, uh, hi, John and Jenna. Hope everyone has had a great week. Now hit the like button and get that sale. Yes. Right. Victor says, hi, everyone. Uh, let's all have a great weekend. Kina, Kina got her scale. And uh, uh, hey, John and Jenna got the scale and it's amazing. Thanks very much. You guys rock. Awesome. That's really good to see. Um, no one designed. Uh, says, hello, and, uh, John and Jenna, not from Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> He is from Lakeland, Florida. No, he is not from Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> oh. So we got Kevin in the house from Kevin. Lakeland, Florida. Uh, Truman Lost in Time Picker says, hello, all. Art Betzold says, hello. And we have only cool stuff says, evening peepa. Peeps. peeps. Peepa. Well, you can say peepa. That'd be like a new thing, right? Evening peepa. <laughs> um, Tony Resells, what's up, everyone? Jackie Bleckner. And I don't know what Tommy's saying here. Zahir. Zahir. What is Zahir? Um is he just saying he's present? Um, only cool stuff is good topic. I used to think I was great at sourcing, but I recently realized how I was undoing the value of my goods, uh, good finds by also buying slow selling crap. And, you know, some people will justify their purchases by saying, look, look, um, they, they're, you know, there's about 10 of these listed and they want 40 bucks for them, right? And they fail to look at the sold comps uh, or they do the opposite. They look at the sold comps, see it sold once, um, maybe who knows, maybe it was just maybe a mistake that the item sold for even that price. And they think that's what it's worth. And then they buy it and then they get home and no one buys it from them because it's just not worth that much. Um, he says, Jenna, very beautiful as always. Thank you, uh, the Tommy uh, Bernard podcast is always great. Z, uh, other than our, uh, Garstang type weather. Garstang. Now, are you up in uh, the Northeast? I wonder. Isn't he? I thought he was up in like the northeast, but I might be wrong. Not north northeast. I thought it was like uh, I don't, I don't want to say it out loud because I don't know. Silver hair says hi. Uh, we have Gail Carlson. Hello, John and Jenna. Hey, Justin Jenna. says hi. And uh, Marco Carpio says happy Friday, John and Jenna. It's been an awesome week of sales. Smash that like button. Oh, good, awesome. Uh, I mean, I can't complain. The sales were good uh, last couple days, and um, just waiting for people to get off of work, I guess, to start buying our stuff. And uh, I need to get some more stuff listed, too. I mean, I, I did the whole store refresh thing, but um, we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Janet says, I had to stop listing on Monday. I'm sorry, on eBay, 3-5 till present. I sold more during that period. Um, wow. So you, you stopped listing and stole, sold more during that period. I hope you've been doing, like, things. I mean, it's certainly possible. I mean, you, you want to show activity to ebay but if you're in there working your listings um lowering your prices um doing the end item sell similar thing that's all showing activity uh thomas says rain all day oh that's that's no good uh kim says was going to take a break from listing but got the notification that y'all were live so decided to listen and some more happy friday everyone well thanks for for uh, joining right. us kim uh purple cactus sales says hello just joined and uh, silver hair is from Garstang, England. No, uh, it's a question, so oh. I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, someone said Garstang earlier. That was Tommy. Tommy. No. Yes, it was. Okay. It was that one. Go okay. Well, I believe you. I'll just, <laughs> just move on. Maya Koyama says, filling this too, I made a lot of great sales, handpicking items at thrift stores and bins. Then Impulse bought a lot of bulk clothing boxes, which is just a lot of work for not much profit. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did that at the bins, you know, like about two months ago. And I was sitting on a bunch of clothes. I had an hour to kill. And I said, oh. Nobody you want to want to list. Well, the shoe Nazis sold. Uh, uh, the shoe Nazis uh, showed up to the bins and put all the shoes in their cart. Left just nothing to look through. So I said, I've got an hour before uh, an appointment out there about a block away. So I said, let me just let me rummage through these clothing bins here. And uh, I didn't, you know, I'm looking, I'm just oh, throwing stuff. Delaware. I'm throwing stuff in the, Sorry. you know, the cart. And, you know, this looks good. This looks good. Not looking up at a comp at all, but just trying to say, okay, well, I'm only paying $1.69 a pound for this stuff. I mean, how much, 
Um, I mean, how much can I be really spending here? I am spending like 40 something bucks for a big bag, uh, a Kohl's bag full of clothing and I still have to list it. So I'm sure I can make money off it. A lot of cool stuff, but that's the kind of buys I'm talking about. You know, you're buying stuff you think. I mean, I'm sitting there. I have no business buying this stuff, but here I am. I'm at the bin. So that's kind of a lesson. You know, it's like 50 bucks. I think I'd rather have back in my pocket. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Truman says, I've uh, never regretted saying no to something. I've regretted saying yes and ignoring my gut saying no. Yeah. There's a lot of times you're on the fence like, oh, I don't know. Um, maybe you remember selling that or multiples of that years ago, but maybe the market's changed. Maybe it's just the demand's not there anymore for that. Um, Brian says, hello, love you guys. Roughly what percentage of your sales are returned? Um, I think we're like about 3%. It, I mean, it's small. You want to stay roughly under 5%. Here's a good thing about when you sell everything like I do. Um, when you sell everything, eBay wants you to have, I believe, at least 10 um items sold in that category within the, like the last 30 days for them to consider that as a high return. And a lot of times uh, my returns are in different categories where I don't have enough items sold. And accumulatively, if I'm in 20 categories, I might have two here, one there, three there, and I'll never be uh, rated as high, even though in some categories it could be because of that. So that's another real yeah, good reason. Yeah, we have a back about two years ago, I think, we had a really high health and beauty return rate. Mm -hmm. And we kind of teetered on being okay or being not okay. Well, that would be like uh, losing your top rated status. Yeah. yeah. I think it, it, it's, it's really, you want to stay out of the very high range. Mm -hmm. So high is fine, right? But um, I, I just really think that the numbers get calculated in the algorithm. It all matters it, a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. Um, PTS treasure says, hello. Tommy says, yeah, Todd Zahir is the prime minister of Garstang. So why are we talking about that right here? That's what I want to know. I want to, I'm try, I was trying to figure out where the initial conversation started with it, but I, uh, I, um, Carolyn bling, over. bling factor. Australia says, hi, John and Jenna. Hope you had a good week and feeling better. You know, I'm feeling fine. It just, I sound like, I think I still sound like hell, but maybe that's just normal. Um, Let's see. Tommy Z has a has an aunt Thelma. See, you know, and, and if jovial jugglers, mama's name is Thelma. See, and so maybe Thelma wants something, and you know, look, it's not nobody's business what you're doing on your phone. I mean, unless um, you're doing something that's destructive, you know, you shouldn't feel obligated to say what you're doing. Um, I mean, I I don't think I necessarily would go as far as just lying to, you know, the person saying that you know maybe you're sending aunt Thelma you know, a message to see if she'd like it. But I mean, for all they know, that's what you're doing. And uh, to me, I don't really want the people at the yard sale to really know that I'm a reseller off, off the top. Um, maybe as we start talking, we'll talk about it. Um, you know, you know, when we start talking to the person, little small talk and then bringing it up that way. But um, because if they're just one of those people and you guys know what I'm talking about, the ones that are just like, you know, I want to sell this stuff. I'm really uh, having yard sale to get rid of this stuff, but I don't really, I would rather keep it than have you make money off of me. That mentality. I think that's the mentality a lot of eBay sellers have when they see maybe a drop shipper just bought their item and is asking not to send the invoice. And they start like feeling offended. Like, how dare you buy my item so you can sell it for more? And I missed out on that opportunity. Um you know, it's just the it's just the wrong mentality. You, you just got to think as a reseller, look, as long as I was able to move it, I made a little bit on the sale. I don't care if this thing gets sold 10 more times by the time it finds its home. Um, I made my money. I'm moving on. Amazon Seller 99 says, hey, guys, how you doing? Uh, Janet Hader, Hider, Hader. I sold more without listing an eBay during March than I did January and February. Goofy, huh? You know what, though? I'd say that March was a really good month. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of that is because people were getting their refunds, their their tax refunds. People still are getting their tax refunds. And that's why things seem to do well better in March than they do in January, February, I think. Um, let's see. No one designs says, hey, John, let Jenna said, hey, say hello. <laughs> <laughs> that was I'm, I'm still kind of behind your comments, though. 
Uh, Sandra Hoyer is uh, says, hi, I'm late. So oh, you're here. Andy's in the house from Indiana. Um, let's see. Thank you, Tommy Z. What, where? Oh, Jenna's looking beautiful as usual. Uh, says, we can tell someone's voice is better because I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Uh, let's see. There's the Jenna smile. And we have Kimberly Sweet is in the house. We have Eric V is in the house. Wanda Greer is with us today. Oh, God. 85 and humid? Ugh. No. Uh, let's see. No one designs. He's got his high school voice back. <laughs> A little. Deportes en el recuerdo says, hello, John and Jenna. There's uh, here Dan and Natalie from Jenna's Sweeter City. Oh, this? Oh. From Palm Beach? Palm Beach. Oh, Sweater City. I'm like, what is a sweeter? Uh, Thomas, the first sign of a bad buy is saying, well, it only costs if you only have to justify the buy. It's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, someone looks at the side eye when you bring it home and it's like, well, it only costs $2, but that thing never sells, right? Um, you know, and then when you when you realize it's not worth anything, like this, this, this I don't know. I, I didn't look at any of this clothing up. But when I got home, I'm like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have spent the time to buy it. So, of course, the motivation to list it's not there because I'm like, I'm, you know, I might have to recruit Jenna into creating some drafts for me and then I'll just take the no, photos. I already whatever. looked through it. It's crap. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Shows you what I know about clothing. My clothing game is not strong. I'll just no, tell you that right he's now. He's way better at shoes and electronics. I don't even dress myself and well. So, you know, it's like if you don't dress well I know yourself, no one design is going to have a comment. If that. you don't dress yourself well, why are you in the the market to buy clothing to dress other people? It just doesn't make sense. So that's <laughs> that's why I need to stay out of the you clothing can't game. Dress fine. Nah, no, no, no. I mean, there was a time when we started dating. Oh my gosh. Yeah, my clothing game is not strong. One of our coworkers had to take him shopping. Yeah. To get him a new wardrobe. Yeah. And uh, rest rest in peace, uh, Mr. Joe. Mr. He's not with us anymore. But, uh, yeah, he uh, said, yeah, we're going to have to do something. So uh, he told Jenna that I'm taking him shopping. So we went to, like, uh, like the uh, Victoria Gardens in California. This is when we were out in California years ago. And uh, I was like, yeah. I'm like, uh, really? Buy that? Yep. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, it was really one of those uh, things. But Joe did real good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Kina says, I sent you guys a thank you mail yesterday. Be sure to check. You know what? I, I, I think oh. that, uh, I remember seeing it pop up, but I didn't get to read it yet. So I'll, I'll read that later on today. And Tommy's in Delaware in the North Southeast. Delaware, so here's only cool teeny, stuff. Tiny speck of the United States. The best YouTube channel in all of the Garstang England. Okay. Very, very cool. Uh, American Arbitrage. Oh, Carrie says, howdy, friends, to finally catch a live. Thanks wow. for hanging out with us today. Um, appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Mel's Fab Finds. Good week of sales. Uh, gross weather today here in southeastern PA. I sourced so much crap at first and tightening it down even more for this year, for sure, once I work uh, through all in hand. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I just got to get, I mean, sometimes you, you get a lot of crap, right? But the, it's getting the motivation. Okay. Now, now I got this crap. Now what? Right. Um, I still have, I still got a crap. I still have crap that I've had from the stuff when I realized I had crap and it still needs to be listed. And I guess the alternative it is, the alternative is, is to throw it away. Um, but I'm just too cheap to do that. So I'll list it at some point. Um, Janet says, I did nothing on eBay during March until today. We'll see what happens. Hmm. Well, I got to keep that activity going. So, you know, try Maybe to do that. She's been sick. Are you, are you okay, Janet? Is everything um, all right? We've got Leonard in the house. He's from New Hampshire. New Hampshire. And uh, Tommy's getting his electricity turned back on here pretty soon. So get his shoes. You get his shoes listed here. He already, got, uh, he already had a shoe sale during the line. Kina says, shoe Nazis. I, I kid you not. There's a team of, I think, Three or four people, they get there right at eight o'clock when they open. I happen to get there at like eight oh five, and all the bins had shoes that were thrown, actually thrown into carts. And you know, people they walk away with their carts and they start rummaging through their cart, making pairs and or like saying, "Ah, do I want this pair or not?" So they start they start going back and throwing the crappy ones back. Yeah. 
And it's like, you know, they, there's got to be a rule against that. It's you know, you rude. can't. I mean, selfish. I think what I'm going to do is I think. I'm, what if I really needed those pairs of shoes? I think what I'm going to do is instead of getting a cart, I'm just going to go roll up and I'm going to take a bin and just like roll it <laughs> over to the corner. And I'm just going to take the bin. That's my cart. Um, busy girl says, hi, glad to catch you guys live. Well, thanks for being here. It's because you're so busy. Yeah. Um, Jeff Zenick says, greetings, John and Jenna. Hello. Craig Winans says, hi, all just saw this was on. Yeah, you know what? Hey, I didn't hey. get the the announcement out until like one o'clock Pacific, so I apologize for that. Yeah, he's um, been dilly dallying with you know the. <clears throat> uh, a friend of mine, we came over, played some golf. We went over to the PGA store, you know, checked stuff out. You know, we're getting ready for uh, that golf trip that's coming up in three weeks, where Jenna's going to be solo Why? on the live. You have to talk about it because you just need to get yourself ready for it. So Wanda it's Greer be free for all that day, guys. So just. There's going to be no normalcy to that life. Wanda caught what we had all the way in North Carolina. Thanks. Mm. Yeah, it just went right through this little microphone. I'm sorry, Wanda. I'm still dealing with the sore throat. I'm telling you, last night I had a really hard time sleeping because my throat's killing me. Yeah, I guess we missed the report where you can get it, you know, you can get the COVID, <laughs> like breathing it in. You can get it with like through your eyes and you can get it through microphones. Um you know, across the internet, it's just one of those things that came we out. Really didn't mean to. Um, Maya Koyama says, uh, "Anyone, Maya. Maya, anyone know if eBay has stopped holding funds for returns? A buyer opened a return yesterday on one of my items uh, uh, for fit, and I didn't see a hold on my account yet. Um, you know, it's weird. They only seem to hold funds for me when uh, the buyer opens a case. So they'll uh, they open a case, and then the money is being held, and then when they make the decision, it's released." Um, I don't know how old your account is, but that may have something to do with it. That type of thing. Mav Jab Maverick says, I just realized I've been listing recently without knowing that eBay changed their listing page where you have to check a box. If you want to be paid immediately with buy it now, why stupid eBay? Wow. Yeah. Um, you can, because there's a lot of people who really they're sellers that really prefer that option not to be uh, clicked because maybe that person's going to buy multiples from you and you want to be able to combine shipping, that type of thing. My other account, I tell you, I had fewer non-paying buyers on that account with it turned off than on my main account with it turned on. Um, Tommy said, got my sale for hitting the like on Cloud Shoes, $102, including shipping. Now, Cloud Shoes, I never heard of Cloud Shoes. I have. I just don't remember what they look like. Yeah. So, you know, I've been looking um, for some of the brands that Tommy sells. There's, they're, they're very hard to find. Um, it's not the kind of brands that people just donate to Goodwill, apparently. Um, Only Cool Stuff says, same here in the UK regarding people not liking the idea of resellers buying their stuff. And, and I don't know why. I mean, if someone came to you... Because they're making money off of it. I think I would be a little offended, too. But look, if somebody if, came and bought something from my yard sale and they're like, oh, well, I'm just going to go resell this. Well, had I known it was of any value, I would have listed well, it. I mean, I guess the only exception would be if, you know, someone's coming to me and saying, look, this is going to go to a good cause, you know, and, you know, fine, buy it. You know, hey, I'm happy to sell, give you a discount, that kind of thing. Um, but other than that, you know, just someone buying stuff for themselves. What does it matter what they're going to do with your stuff? I mean, um, why have that mentality? But I, I got to say, there's sellers on eBay. If you look at forums where they get up in arms because someone's bought their stuff. They're obviously uh, a drop shipper or a reseller asking for no invoice. And they get really bothered by that. And uh, I had one person say, hey, they haven't paid yet. Should I just cancel it? And it just doesn't make sense. I mean, uh, certainly, actually, I take that back. They, they did pay and they were going to ship it. And because of that note, they were going to cancel it. And it's like, whatever. I mean, be happy to get the sale. Um, no one designs that each location is different. Some yard sell, flea market, love resellers. They buy in bulk. And some people have this social justice mentality, thinking resellers just take from the homeless and people in need. Yeah. And, and, uh, 
it's like, how dare you buy that? And now the person that, uh, you know, may wander in here, um, unless you're taking the last size large that's on the rack and even then, but even if you're taking the last size, they don't have to have that particular shirt. Uh, why does, you know, the homeless guy need a Tommy Bahama shirt? Um, I don't because know. Because it's a dollar and it's in the bin. <clears throat> I don't know. It is what it is. Justin says, I go to Amazon bin store on a $1 day and still find high dollar items to flip. You can. And from what I understand, because I asked the lady the last time I was there, I said, uh, you know, these items, they don't all come from the store, right? Because the reason why I know that is because not all like the shoes have the Goodwill tag on them. And she says a lot of it comes from like those donation uh, bins. So instead of taking those to the store, they just send them right to the clearance, uh, which is the the, the, the bins. Ones when we drop them off, and then yeah, oh. and uh, those get picked up, and and they're take uh, they're taken to so the uh, the goodwill bins. No, they don't. Um, you can get brand new stuff in those. Yeah. Um, I've donated a lot of things in my life. Justin just sold uh, some K cups for a hundred dollars. Paid a dollar for it. Wow. Wow. Now just make sure they're not dollars for K cups. How many did you sell? Well, there must be in a big box, but big just make sure box. they're not expired. That's for sure. Yeah, you got to make sure. Uh, Brian H says you're one of two eBay reseller YouTubers that I constantly watch. Well, thanks, Brian. I appreciate thanks, you. Brian. Um, did no, I just had. <laughs> yes, he did. What the hell? I just played golf earlier. I didn't change. That's all. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> who wears who wears parachute pants? No, I never had parachute pants. I do have some some Adidas sweats that I bought. They're really baggy. You currently have them? Yeah, they're uh, Adidas, and they have like the little zipper on the bottom of the, the ankle. And uh, I bought them like three years ago. They're comfortable, I don't know which ones you're but they're not the the you know you know are what I'm talking about. Ones? No, they're the gray ones, not shorts, but sweats. Um. I don't know that they have a tie in the back, honey. Tie? What are you talking about? Did you just say a they zipper have a tear down on the bottom? Zipper on the ankle. Oh. I, uh, don't know. I do his laundry. But no I designs. Know. I bet John was sporting Flav Flav bling. No. Oh my I did god! Not. The, the friend that's visiting us right now, he he left so that we could do the live. But oh my god, he could share some serious stories. Oh, man. oh my god. They used to videotape themselves. And the videotape still exists. I know. Yeah, that's worse than <laughs> the lipstick that's video. that's what we're going to bring up. Uh, that's worse than the lipstick the video. Live. But uh, I got to tell you, we this is when we like the, the camcorder was like a real like cool thing. And that's the VHS tapes. And so <laughs> I didn't have MC Hammer, Hammer Pants even I, then. Yes, you did. I'm going to have Don get I the, did not. The I promise you. I thought those were, were ridiculous. But didn't you have the clock like flavor flav no we had no i didn't have a clock like flavor flav i um <laughs> we had i had this weird hat on with a feather in it and oh, we're yes and we were doing uh this is when we we're in high school and uh me and a, the friend that's here visiting we uh did uh digital underground humpty dance yes. and we were just lip syncing it right we we're being stupid we had like different outfits on and it was just funny right we're just having fun with it but no, I didn't do the MC Amber pants. Um, I'm trying to think of those pants that I did have. Uh, I had Bogo, Bo, Bojo's. Uh, yes. Z Cavariccis. I did have Cavariccis. I had Cavariccis. And uh, we had the like the the rayon shirts and stuff. That was the style back for us in the the uh, early '90s. Remember, John is older than. Oh me. yeah. Well, I don't know what was in style when you. We're in high school. Sylvia Chamberlain says, hello, I'm fairly new, but have been trying to catch all the lives. Really enjoy your guidance and leadership. Right now I'm actually working, but I'm listening as I drive. Well, good. Oh, well, sweet. Well, welcome. Okay. Well, be careful, but you're yeah. wor hopefully you're not working on eBay while you're driving <laughs> that, and, and listening to us. That would be Maybe really she's tough. she's doing a job that requires driving. Yeah, like that's probably it. Deliveries or something. But that would be really talented if you could do eBay while you're driving and listening to this program. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> here you go. Tommy says, Oh, if your throat is hurting, Jenna, just let John do all the talking. Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> I bet we're gonna have a ton of people here when I'm gone. That's gonna be awesome. Uh, it's okay, I won't know what to say. No one design says, like... <laughs> John, Jenna, bring a lot of John's early day photos on how he dresses himself. It's great. 
He when when I first when we first started dating, he was wearing jean shorts all the time. Yeah. Every day. We like those jean shorts. I don't have any more. But by that's the way. what was in back then. So I didn't know. I didn't think anything of it. And then that's when our friend Joe took over and says, dude. Out with the old and with the new. That would make a great video right here. Kina says, uh, me and old Goodwill lady will whack you in the head and take that bin. Jenna uh, got videos so we can all see. So, yeah, that would be a great video. And I'd get kicked out, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but to make to make a video where you take the bin, like, okay, oh this is my cart, and try to maybe justify that. There is one lady at this Goodwill bin she loves yelling at people and she's the nicest lady when she's working the register, but when she's working the floor, she doesn't play it's games. Like a whole it's like, person. wow. Um, Wanda uh, silver says do comps on clothing before listing, cut your losses. If the comps are not there, I sell men's clothing and shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm sure. Look, I spent, I ended up getting about probably about 50 items in this bag. And I'm sure that I think I spent 40 something bucks. I'll make my money back. It's not a problem. You spent $40 I did. I did. I sure did. Wow, honey. See, even he does bad buys. Okay. Well, that's not bad for that many. It's like a dollar a piece. I thought it was pretty good At stuff. The Goodwill bins. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. No. Some of it was pretty good stuff. No, Why don't we so. break it out? Go get the bag. Go get the bag. No. Let's let them judge. Um, Thompson uh, team films and photos. Hello, first time seeing you all. I like your vibe and straight up honesty. Yeah, I mean, awesome. look, thank you. It, it, uh, I don't even know if I could even blow smoke properly, to be honest with you. I He's mean, not a smoke blower. I mean, really, it's just, look, I'm going to either do good or bad, I'm going to screw up, or I'm going to do good, something good and I'm going to report it to you guys. I mean, um, I, I think a lot of times we look at YouTubers and we see, like, wow kind of elevate them and please don't do that to me because i i mean look i'm just a regular person um but um we just look we go out we try to do the best we can sometimes we screw up i mean i look at it like this michael jordan screwed up more than he succeeded and he was the best basketball player that ever lived um he missed i think he missed more shots than he took and yet he is the number one basketball player that ever lived now you can have that debate about kobe bryant i've seen them both Kobe's right up there, but uh, Jordan is, and also uh, LeBron James. No, uh, Michael Jordan all day long. Uh, Kimberly Sweet says, where do you go in your account to see the start date of an eBay account? Wow, that's a good one. Um, um, the only place I've ever seen it, which he works more on the PC, but I do the, um, the app, and the app on the phone will tell you... Um, it might be easier just to call eBay. They'll tell you, thank you for being such a loyal member for 15 years, right? <laughs> and they're like, okay, cool. Uh, that's 2008, right? So um, that's a good question, though. That is a good question because I've seen it before on the app. I just don't recall. Maybe someone will have an answer oh, to it. Oh. Member since 2018. Do you need to know the exact date? Well, that's the secondary account that we made. That, that, that's our secondary account. Um, but as far as yours, you could go in mm, yours. Yeah, I don't know where to look. I mean, I could go on the phone, I guess. It'll tell me. For me, it's uh, 2000. They say they keep telling me 15 years, like uh, like it's 2007. But I've been selling since 2002. So I don't know what happened. Maybe I created a new account or something. Account. Yeah, that was an account that I had, it was called CompuTrends, believe it or not. I mean, it's like, yeah, this was selling computer says, Yeah, I thought it was kind of a cool vibe, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever, maybe not. Uh, Janet Hader says, uh, thanks, Jenna. I had ID theft and just in coming out of fixing everything. Oh. I wasn't in the frame of mind to give a crap about my, uh, any of the platforms doing better now. Oh, my God. Well, I hope that gets resolved and everything. Ooh, Wanda, up. that's worse than what we had. Thanks for the sympathy. So sick for weeks. Could not even eat applesauce. Now, oh. if it's what we had with that throat, you I did, couldn't even really drink anything. It was just yeah. so bad. But uh, I gotta I gotta give a shout out to CBD eighteen hundred milligram gummies. Those <laughs> things are awesome. Um, so I I I kind of make you guys think I go to ASD twice a year for the for the stuff that they're selling. I mean, they're the wholesale. No, we go for the. We just go there to hustle. And and I think even we were Get even. I even 
I was even on the, yeah, I might, I might open a store, you know, kind of thing just to get in the conversation because once you get in the conversation, they're like, well, we have cash and carry and you know, like, okay, well, uh, how much for this CBD, uh, the bag of gummies, right? Oh, normally those retail for like 60 bucks, but we'll sell them to you here for 20. I'm like, okay, well, cool. I'll do that. I said, I bought them last time for 15. He's like, you know what? I'll give them to you. 15. I'm like, well, great. And so I, his channel. I hope not, but I'll be back in August uh, <laughs> because those things, I mean, you wouldn't think that that would help, but when you're sick and you have a sore throat and achy muscles, um, those the C and there's no THC. It's not gonna get you high. I have friends that are like, well, that get you high. No, it won't get you high. It's just like taking aspirin without, um, you know, I think it's Ruining bad. Your it, liver. I don't know. Will it ruin your liver if you take CBD? I don't know. Uh, George Carter says, do you know what time eBay payout? Is it a random time or as soon as the, the clock strikes, strikes midnight? I've seen payouts that are like really early in the morning. Um, I'll see that they happen. And then, you know, for, I guess it's what happens to me. And then I'm great. Uh, they're not going to be able to take that money out of uh, what I owe for UPS labels. Uh, so I'm going to have to uh, lately, you saw the video I put out where they hit my account for $181. It wasn't a big deal. Of course, you know, it resolved itself when the deposit hit. But my only concern wasn't for me. I had some people leave, left some messages in the video, you know, saying, hey, well, you need to do it better if you're concerned about that. Hey, it ain't about me. It's about that poor guy down there, you know, who's been selling and, you know, is about to maybe uh, miss some payments on his uh, house or car. And um, he finally sent a car payment off, left him with zero balance. And then eBay took that money. Now his, his car payment's going to bounce. So. I don't know. Jovial Juggler loved parachute pants, could only afford one pair, wore them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, washed them on Tuesday and Thursday, slipped in the uh, slipped on the ice one time and slid all the way down the driveway. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. And that that became the that become like the uh new dance, right? Uh Kimberly Sweet, if you list something with free shipping, does eBay get paid on the entire amount? If you separate the shipping, does eBay get paid on the shipping? When you're talking about getting paid, you're talking about the final value fees. They'll hit you on eBay is going to hit you free shipping or not. They're going to on everything that the buyer pays you, including tax. So the cost of the item, um, your shipping, if you have it separate and the tax is going to be hit with the final value fee plus promoted listing fees. So it uh, doesn't matter how you set it up. They found a way to get it. Tommy Bernard says, on running uh, on running is the brand. These are on Cloudance. Roger Federer is the sponsor, a backer or something of the company. And Cloud and uh, Haka are probably the most, or Hoka are the most popular athletic shoes for soccer moms. <laughs> okay, good I've good never bolo. heard of them until you brought them up. Good bolos right there. Ago. Good bolos right there. Um, let's see. Josh is in the house. Josh Avenata, uh, Avendano says, what's up, John and Jenna? Are you going to the upcoming Trash for Cash meetup in Vegas? I'm planning on going. would love to meet you. You know what? Um, I was talking it? to Archie. It's uh, the week after I get back from my trip. Oh, and uh, I, I won't be here. Yeah, Jenna won't be here because she has the, uh, uh, the celebration, little, of yeah, life. celebration of life for, for her cousin. And uh, so she won't be here that weekend, but uh, I was talking to Archie and I told him, I said, look, I'll go if you go. I know that uh, Mike Camparelli, uh, uh, big uh, supporter of the channel, friend of the channel, uh, he's uh, certainly planning on being out here. And so, um, and I'd like to meet a lot of people uh, for sure. And I told, I told Archie, I said, you know what, if you're going to go, I'll go. Uh, just let me know when you're ready. I think it, uh, I don't know if Carrie is still here watching the live, but uh, I know that they're putting it together. I think it's like 40 bucks or something. And uh, I believe there's still tickets available, but I don't know where to go. So if well, he's here, he can plug it. Yeah. Huh? Where? It's, I don't know. It's a good question in Vegas somewhere, but I, Carrie, if you're out there. Yeah. Get comment. your head out of your baseball cards and, and uh, help me here. Uh, no one designed too says eBay charge fee on shipping as well. An entire amount for fee and plus tax. Yes. PTS treasure says $1 a day at the Amazon bin store has been good to us at times. Um, Do we have an Amazon? I would bin? love an Amazon I bin store. An Amazon and I was, I was, I was talking to Archie the other day and I was talking to him about, um, 
we're talking about the Lindy Glenn thing that uh, apparently she's back. Well, she's come out with a lot of videos and she's saying, Hey, she lost the, she made, she made a million in sales and then came back and said, you know, but we, we had some bad buys and stuff, you know, and that can happen in any industry when you're learning for the first time, that type of thing. Um, but we were talking about, um, you know, kind of being happy that we didn't go that route because we were talking about the idea about two years ago of trying to open kind of a bin store kind of thing. And uh, there's still really not any bin stores out here. I mean, I'd like to see one, but the moment one opens and others see the success that you're having, there's going to be multiples that open. And that's where the problems arise. You're still in competition with other bin stores around the country uh, and people who buy liquidation truckloads and pallets, which makes it harder for us to get that type of stuff. Um, it really just goes to show you that, you know, the business itself can bring in a good amount of money but you got to make i mean you've got to learn from the mistakes and yeah. definite that that's why this whole community is here you know we we do our best to share our failures and the good things that happen within the business so that you know not everybody has to go through those kind of um, growing pains but watching i watched that and i uh, I stopped watching Lindy a long time ago, but I watched that last video or I don't know if it's her last, but the, uh, that video and she, she was completely honest and that, you know, I, that that's honorable. Well, you know, um, and I, I had put a, a little note in her video saying that, you know, be careful because she was talking about putting stuff on like Facebook marketplace and stuff. And I said, you know, be careful because if your buyers are used to coming to the bins looking for uh, good value, you know, they could find some pretty good stuff in here. And now you're taking the pretty good stuff and putting them up like on Facebook Marketplace and stuff. I don't know if that's what she's doing, but, you know, um, that's kind of the, the pitfall that a lot of these liquidators fall into. And it it pretty much brings down your whole operation. There's a lot of liquidators that don't get the same kind of business because they just don't have the same value that they're putting in these pallets. And uh, I think that's what's happening to some of these bin stores. Well, that's what she said in the beginning of the video is she was yeah. getting truckloads that were so much crap. She oh, was yeah. throwing it all away. Right, right. And uh, I think you just got to learn to deal with, you know, when it comes to buying at the truckload level, I think um, what she should have done. And she's been in contact with Tom from Liquidation Motivation. So he could have steered her the right way. I don't know. I don't know the, the, the details behind it, but uh, there's certainly some shady people out there that sell large truckloads of merchandise and you just got to navigate and find the people you can trust before you really start making big purchases. Um, Craig says, I just raised prices on a lot of my stuff by 5% and now they're starting to sell. I think some viewing items panic uh, when they see low prices start to rise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the thing is, there's different tactics. I mean, ultimately, Craig, you're showing you're showing activity to the uh, algorithm, and that goes a long way. Um, and sometimes that that won't detour someone from buying your item. I think I got a sale here. No, I got a text. Well, they'll have to wait. Um, Roman says, "Hello, everyone. Sorry, Tommy, forgot to tell me to set alarm at 6 p.m. So I overslept." Yeah, something about going to the bins and getting all that good stuff that just wipes you out, Roman. So, uh, but thanks for being here with us. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, no Design says, I bet John sells a pair of Cavaricis in his closet. No, because I don't fit in them. Um, those are, I was, and this is kind of cool. I'm very proud of this. I was like a size, I was a size 33. Now, for those of you who buy clothing, know that you buy 32 or 34. But Cavaricis uh, actually had their sizing, uh, they had 33s. So I was perfect in a 33. And uh, uh, I can tell you that I still wear size 36. So I'm not that far off. But I certainly wouldn't be able to fit in those from high school. Um, any throwback pictures? Wow. No, I don't have any on hand. But uh, my, it seems like my friends seem to have them. I have a friend that has an old bowling picture of us. And I, you know, I think it, I had my my hat backwards. I mean, no surprise there. And then my friend Don, he has uh, a bunch of uh, videos that are on his phone that I'm probably going to see if he can share with me. But I don't know if I want to 
That's I'd rather show you the lipstick video of me helping her with the little lipstick thing. She was selling some of this lipstick that wouldn't smear. And so she wanted to me, she wanted me to help her. And I'm like, well, fine, you know, I'll be a good sport. And we did a little video that she did on her Facebook for about, about 30 or 40 friends. So, um, even that I'm more comfortable putting out in front of thousands of people than old, uh, videos of me being a fool. Um, PTS treasure says, Craig, we've done the same this week. Uh, raising prices just a bit has been great for us this week. Okay. Um, Biff Boffle says flipping ain't easy, but John is too legit to quit. <laughs> hey, I went, I went to an MC hammer concert. Did she come in? She came and we also got a delivery. Oh, that's wonderful. It's a return. No, it's a return and um, bubbles. Oh, good. So we got some more bubbles. I think I'm on American bubble boys, like automatic ship list. They, we need to be. Yeah. Well on the big bubbles, I'm, I'm no, on that it's list. The, it's the other one. Okay, dressing ain't easy, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> Tommy says, does John still have his Flava Clock necklace? I never had one of those. And I know he he's out here. Uh, Flava Flav is out in Vegas. In Vegas. He, yeah, and uh, someone said they saw him. At like Fremont Street. Yeah, but I think I'd freak out if I saw him because, you know, Public Enemy, you know, well, I did like know, Public Enemy. Not, uh doesn't have much money anymore, so he does things at Fremont Street. To... Does he? That's what I, oh. I saw a video. Uh, as long as he's not trying to be that old lady with the tassels, oh, I'm good with that. God. You guys ever been to Fremont Street? It's a, it's a, it's just a trip. It is not for children. No. AEIOU from eBay says, John and Jenna, I've never really figured out what you are selling nowadays. Uh, have you, have you said I can bounce your eBay store? I guess, but I thought I'd ask. Well, I we mean, sell a lot of everything. Like, I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, I'm selling things that I never thought even we existed. We sell shoes. We sell shoes. <laughs> we sell shoes a lot. Um, but as far as like, uh, I think I told you guys I sell like uh, the automated cat litter boxes. I sold uh, today. I sold a, sand, a stand mixer. Um, that was something I, pr I purchased. The, the, I sold that Power Coffee XL pots. smokeless electric outdoor grill that I got in the pallet. I sold an older, uh, we've had that for like almost a year, the espresso uh, machine, um, shoes. I sell a lot of the Barbie accessories. I still have a bunch of. We're almost, I need to do a, I need to take inventory on those because I think we're, we're finally, I can see the bottom of the bin. Yeah. Just a lot of this randomness. I mean, um, uh, computer keyboard trays, there's some fancy ones. Golf cart enclosures. Golf cart covers. Yeah, I mean, I'm on it, man. I am on it. It's working. So that's what I'm we selling. Have a lot. We sell. Cat Look, boxes. the way I'm looking I at understand. it is like this. Again, my strategy, and you can put this strategy into play at yard sales, is look, fine. They, this thing, this thing's going for two bucks right now. Now, I I do auctions and stuff a lot, but I'm I'm evaluating. Okay, if I can get this thing for two bucks. And the comp show, look, it's sold uh, on a number of occasions, like maybe three times the last 90 days, but it's going for 100 I'm willing to buy that $2 item and sit on it for a little while, right? But um, if it's up there about 6 7 bucks, and that, like, all day long I'm buying that kind of item if it's selling or it has some pretty good comps, but if it's pretty scarce, you know, maybe have high competition, but maybe it's sold once in a while, uh, I'm not that interested, like like car parts, like, you know, a, a set of struts for a, you know, Cadillac Escalade. Okay, so you look it up and two people have sold it. Well, you know, for me, my 40-40 method allows me a lot of room where I can go in and, you know, pay up for that item. But I ain't paying up if it's going to sit. So um, that's kind of a strategy. If you come across stuff that, you know, is eventually going to sell and you don't mind sitting on it, and you get it for pretty dirt cheap, then that's that's a good strategy. Um, just don't expect it to sell right away. Oh no, I never wore Daisy Dukes. <laughs> no, I don't think that I they. Did. I don't think they made. Uh, you would the catch Daisy. me dead in them now, but I sure did. Yeah, my tight butt wouldn't have fit right in Daisy Dukes. <laughs> I tell you that. Uh, Brian H says went to high school in the eighties, had a pair of parachute pants and a members only jacket. Yeah, those parachute pants, man. Those are funky. Had zippers all over the place. Are they? This Roman. Oh, okay. Rome for Roman. 
for Roman, they're in style. I, Roman, your next live, I want to see you in a pair of jean shorts. <laughs> or how about some overalls? Some, how about goes some... live after we are. So tonight, I want to see you in your yeah, jean shorts. Yeah, so, so start now. Start, like, getting in those jean shorts now. <laughs> it might take you a while. But, um, well, they don't or, have to be tight. Oh, well, I think that I think that Noah Design wants to see some Daisy Dukes. So <laughs> make sure they're Daisy Dukes, too, for Noah Design, and he'll come over and hang out in your live. Um, but yeah, how about some bib overalls? Some of some of the uh, uh, some of those are those coming back? I know those yes, were, yes, they are. They oh, actually wow. came back last year and they kind of came and went. And so I don't know if they're still there or not. Cloud Life Smiley says, Guys, love the content. Awesome, we're happy, oh, we're, we're enjoying it. So it's fun. Craig says, Uh, PTS Treasures, at some point, we can keep the prices so low, we aren't making enough profit. I hadn't raised prices since way before the shipping went up. See, that's just it. I mean, look, by by you sourcing well, by you buying stuff like that that car part that sells for hundred bucks, I can get for two bucks. Um, like I bought an Audi grill. I bought I, I think it's for like a two thousand and five to two thousand and eight Audi thing was like matte black and it was in the box and it looked it was new. Um, it just they had opened the box. Maybe someone bought the wrong grill and sent it back. Well, I picked that thing up for two bucks and I'm like, well, I don't know how long this is going to take, but I know I can get about a hundred bucks for it. And I sold that thing. Uh, in a week and it was fairly easy to ship and uh, I'm, I'm fine with that uh, but it gives me room let's say I'm sitting on it for a while I can I can keep lowering the price or whatever you know that type of thing um, let's see Sandra says just uh, got myself a uh, smash the like button it works every time there you go uh, Brian says also had a pair of hush puppy shoes at one point well I gotta tell you I, I was lucky to have Pro Wings, guys. Remember Pro Wings from Payless? Oh, yeah. And before, what are those, that, that term, what are those, was a thing. You guys remember the videos from years ago? That, what are those? What are those? Well, they, they're they a little bit more rude about it uh, in high school <laughs> than that. So, that yeah, that's what happens when you grow up with no money and you're poor and, you know, you get $2 from mom to go and, you know, get a soda with the friends. You think you're living life. but um, I started, I learned at an early age, like when I was 15, that if I wanted something, it's going to be because I worked for it. And so I started working like at a gas station and started working part-time and going to school and stuff. And that's how me and my best friend in high school, we, we kind of got through. So he was in the same boat. Uh, Sanders has got my sale works every time. Uh, <laughs> no one designs his penny loafers sells well. Um, I bet I'm willing to bet that um, pro wings would sell well in good condition because people we have sold pro wing boots. Yeah. I mean, if you have those old, like, you know, like they have the old retro Jordans and stuff that's been people have been sitting on for years. wonder if you have like those, those original pro wing tennis shoes um, that, you know, are in great condition. Maybe you've been sitting on, I mean, who would have thought to do that? That's a ridiculous thought. That's probably why it's never been done, yeah. but I'm sure those would go for a nice pretty. little pretty penny. Because I'm sure someone would want that that flashback to when they were a kid and had no money. Uh, Tommy says, yeah, don't elevate YouTubers 100%. 80% of them can't pay the electric bill with reselling. Yeah, all you got to do is look at their store. you know. And I guess, I guess it's kind of a diss on myself because last year, up until like Jan January of this year, um, my main store was pretty sad, you know, and... Um, you know, it, it wasn't for the lack of trying. It just didn't have the uh, good resourcing opportunities, but you know, we kept trying, we kept looking, we kept, uh, you know, the yard sale thing did supplement what we're doing. Um, but I'd say now we're kind of back on track where I, where I kind of want to be, um, PTS treasures. I've been recycling all items and pushing prices to higher end this last week. Mm -hmm. M daddy says I canceled an item and won by accident. How do I undo that? Oh, I canceled an item that you won by accident. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe contact the seller and say, Hey, look, I just bought this item, you know, so you don't have to go through, you know, waiting for another person, uh, to buy this. Uh, I'm willing to pay for it, you know, right now, if you're willing to relist it because they're going to get their fees back from the original sale. So they shouldn't have a problem with it, but just reach out to the seller and see if they're willing to work with you on yeah. it. Say, I just made a mistake. Um, only cool stuff says I can't pay my electric gas water and oh, yeah, at Tommy Bernard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's sad, but it's, uh, 
you know, there's folks out there that, and I don't know who they are. I don't pretend to know who they are, but all you got to do is look at their stores. And one thing I was wondering is, I know that I think I brought this up before is how do you hide your sales? Now I know that you go in and you put your, couple of people who have. I don't care to hide my sales. You guys can see whatever you want, but why even bother? And um, why would one select that option to do that? I mean, if you're selling, if you're selling on eBay and you have a YouTube channel, um, just certainly have it available for people to see. Now, the only reason for the longest time when I started this channel, I didn't give out my uh, store name is because I was really kind of freaked out about the idea of thousands of people looking at my store. And I'm, I'm every day looking at my traffic reports, looking at my traffic reports. And not so much my sales, my traffic reports. And I still think there's some uh, some value into understanding where your traffic is. But I was like on my traffic reports. And I'm like, I'm not going to have all these random people that are just looky-loos, not buying anything, get on there and just warp my traffic reports. So I don't know. At some point I said, you know what? I, I think I, you know, getting a lot of people asking me about it. They want to see what I'm doing. It kind of lends some credibility that, yeah, you are selling like my main account. Um, just so you know, I have, this is always kind of a thing I like to do is I'll look at their items up for sale. So I have like right around 300 items for sale. And over the last 90 days, I have 454 items. So that's, that's a really good sell through rate. Um, I'm used to having closer to 600, but you got to remember all my other items, other 500 some odd items are on the other account. So we're well over that, I think. So I'm kind of right on the pace that I want to be. Uh, no one designs says Travis Matthew baseball cap XL is over 100% sell through rate. <laughs> Who wears that? I don't know. Huh? This is a golf hat, by the way, but Travis Matthew. Good golf. Matthew? Yeah, good, good golf brand. Uh, Lindsay's video is insightful, I thought. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I just wish that sometimes when people say, you know, we make a million dollars, that you kind of just say, wait, stop. Just, you know, even though it's implied throughout the, the videos, sometimes you see these things that, you know, we really made this, right? We, we sold this, but we really made this. Um, because I, I think that was, the, that was still not answered in my mind, but I'd I like to know. She was, she did answer it. I think she was, she, she led on to saying, explaining that, you know, the overhead and the, and the, this and the, that and the fees and the, that, you know, whatever else the money was going for. Excuse yeah. me. She never said, what they actually make. I'd like to know. I'm sure it's going to be really insightful to know what does a bin store actually make after overhead and fees, you know, because you can sell sell all you want. I mean, I could say, you know, we were a hundred thousand dollar, you know, eBay operation, but that doesn't mean anything if you're operating at a 45% margin, you know, it doesn't mean a whole lot at all. Um, and it, the margins have gotten smaller because uh, thanks to eBay, that type of thing. Um, Let's see. Harry Loomis and uh, New and News says, hello, everyone from Michigan. Happy reselling, everyone. And by the way, I don't know, Lindy. And, and another thing is, I, I like I said a couple of lives ago, really don't want to talk about other channels, but I don't want to do so. If I'll talk about channels if I feel it's someone in a positive light, if it's kind of a positive thing. Um, I've never had any issues with her. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I think she, um, you know, means well when she makes her videos. So therefore, I don't mind. Uh, hopefully she's watching. She doesn't mind us kind of talking about what we saw. I think it gets other people to look at her channel if you haven't seen it. But, you know, for me, if I had 130 plus thousand subs, I definitely uh, would consider uh, returning back to making videos because that is that is a, a good chunk well, of revenue. Can you stream. imagine how stressful it is to have a camera in your face and you just opened a store and you're running into all of these things that you never anticipated and you're having to deal with them head on. And like Lindy said, she is not a, she's not good under pressure. Uh, I, I, I'm not, don't quote me, but I believe she said she's not good under pressure and you know, I would freak out. Yeah. I wouldn't want a camera in my face when I'm dealing with all that stuff. So I don't blame her. Um, but for her to be able to know what she knows now and, learn from what she's gone through in the last two years to be where she is now. And then to video her, her becoming yeah. what she, what she always wanted in the first place. 
that would be inspiring. So Brian H says, I appreciate you're still looking at, uh, you're still outing idiots to block, just block someone from a recent video of yours. Well, thank you. See, here's the thing though. I kind of, I get mixed reactions when I make those. I really enjoyed making the ones that were for block parties and really highlighting their name out there. But then I get people that were like really bothered by, you know, you shouldn't do that. Now, look, this is public information. If, um, you know, I tell you about Joe Blow one, two, three, <laughs> you ain't going to know where Joe Blow one, two, three lives. You're not going to know their name. You're not going to be able to look them up on Facebook. I guess if you could look them up on Facebook, if that's kind of what tag they use, maybe their Instagram name is the same. But nonetheless, if you're going to act like an idiot uh, and, and try to hurt sellers, um, I have no problem at all. And I even talked to eBay. I said, is there a policy? that says that uh, I can't share, because you guys don't allow us to share our experiences, really share our experiences if they happen to be negative with the buyer. You don't allow, allow us to share that with anyone else uh, unless you're trying to throw in a false positive, but that doesn't always work well. So where could I go? I mean, other than creating my own feedback on like social media. So what's eBay's policy with me sharing my experience about a, a, a buyer on social media, as long as I'm not giving out their name, their address, and their phone number, which I would never consider doing at all. And their answer was, well, we really don't have a policy about it. Just use your best judgment. Okay. Well, then that's what I'm going to do. But I still know that it bothers people a lot. So uh, I'll do it in such a way where it doesn't uh, and I'm not trying to please everyone, but I'm at the sorry, same time, but there are some, some buyers out there that just need to be called out on their bullshit because you're, you're messing around with somebody's livelihood and making false accusations and questioning somebody's integrity. You need to be called out for it. Period. Yeah. But you know, I'll, I'll continue making those videos as long as I, now people will email me and say, Hey, this buyer, you know, Joe blow one, two, three did this. And, uh, I, would you call them out? No, I'm not going to call someone out because I wasn't privy to that no, firsthand. Yeah. So if, if I'm never going to do that. To us, then, then it's not going to get called out. Um, let's see. Tommy says, wait, so it's not a good idea to buy inventory that anyone with internet can buy on Google as well. Who knew? Mind blown. <laughs> uh, Marco says, establish good relationships with the people at the Goodwill bins. There's an item that sells well for me, but they're always throw that item out. So now they're going to save it and set this aside for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're nice people. I, I I tried to you know talk to some of them and that that uh, old lady who was uh, really kind of nasty out on the floor she was really nice behind the register and i'm like well you know i i've noticed like i said i noticed that every item doesn't have a tag with like a price on it and uh that's because uh these items aren't all coming from the stores so that's good to know you know because for me uh my mindset was a lot of stuff was just picked over stuff at the stores that people didn't want it was priced too high ebay shipped it off but there's a very good chance you're going to find good stuff at the bins because it's a lot of it's organic, organically placed in those bins. Um, let's see. Thomas says, I failed, but there's a link for buy me a coffee and Patreon to support my failures the American way. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't have one of those yet. Uh, Tommy, you're going to have to help me set that up. The buy me a coffee and the, the Patreon thing down below. I'd love, uh, can you buy me a coffee? <laughs> no, don't can say you that. Buy me a coffee? Yeah, I'll buy you a coffee. You can, you I'll can buy you a medicine ball. Um, let's see. Josh says, do you promote your items? If you do, do you stick to the suggested or above? The strategy I've been using lately is I'll just let it default when I'm listing the item to whatever it's suggesting. And uh, I don't even give it two thoughts. And uh, the reason is I have such a gap between what I bought it for what I'm selling it for that I'm making my money. Um, yes, it's bringing my margins down a little bit, but I'm helping my margins by keeping my buy costs low. And uh, I know sometimes it's, it's very tempting to, to buy an item you really, really want. You really got to have it. I mean, I don't know why if you're selling it, right? I mean, who cares? But you really, really want this item and you're willing to overpay at a yard sale for it. And it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, yeah, you might sell it fairly quick, but you're going to lose if you're, if you're utilizing the promoted listings, if you're playing the 2% game and you're trying to play down there with everyone else. Just remember that 
I believe most people play at 2% because they feel like they have to play the promoted listings game, but they don't want to give any more money to eBay. And to me, it's like uh, stepping over a dollar to pick up a quarter kind of uh, mentality where I'm just hanging on to as many, uh, you know, keep my vi final value fees as low as possible so that, you know, I don't want to give that money to eBay, but you aren't giving money to eBay unless you sell the item. So I don't mind giving a little bit more if that means the item's gone faster. So that's just my thing. And here comes Tommy. 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 <laughs> Gosh. Jeez. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, by the okay, uh, no, lady, a latte Tommy. or something. Jeez, can someone kick the extra penny? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. Uh, it was yeah, going to happen. I want a coffee right Yeah. Now. Well, we can't. We're on the live stream. Um, we're yeah, when we're done. Let's see. See if I can get Do back to where I Do you guys have Dutch Brothers coffee where you are? Because we have Dutch co Dutch Brothers, and it's far superior than Starbucks. Yeah, they're putting a lot of them in here. And then uh, we got that pink box oh donuts. God. God damn you, Tommy. What? No one designed. Oh, geez. Are you kidding me? Stop. You guys are making me lose my place. <laughs> I'm going to have coffee all weekend. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank Darn it. you. This is the best hey, way to panhandle. I coffee tonight. This is the best way to panhandle. Have your own live Sunday. show. <laughs> Just have the wife come on here saying, oh, I really wish I had coffee and get people to panhandle. <laughs> We're not about that, though, guys. No. <laughs> I think it's pretty funny, nonetheless. <laughs> uh, but they, there's this place out here called Pink Box Donuts. Oh. And mm -hmm. it is like the Ooh, most we ridiculous. We could go get a donut. Thanks to Noah Design to go with your coffee. But they have these um, this, these caramel donuts. like It's like the, the cream-filled donuts, and it has like a caramel cheesecake. Oh, my God. It's ridiculous. Oh, my God. It you have a pink box near you, go insane. for it. Insane. Yes. And pink box, if you're watching, I'll sponsor your video for In a dozen a donuts. heartbeat. Yes. Um, let's see. Tommy says, uh, Roman was the original nipple gate. <laughs> Janet Jackson is nothing on Roman. <laughs> Roman would do, you know what, Roman? That's a way you can make a little bin money. Is no, come out to Vegas, to, doing the OnlyFans. No, but come out to Vegas and the, the downtown area when we're having the the, you know, I guess if you're coming to Trash to Cash or if you're coming to the uh, the one in October that they have, and just you know get those tassels out, you'll make some, you'll make a little <laughs> money with those uh, with those Daisy Dukes and the 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 tassels. Oh, you'll God, make some money. Bottle of vodka. That's right. Uh, let's see. Anytime picker, e uh, Roman says eBay loves sellers that promote free shipping and redirects traffic from main server to those sellers. Uh, let's see. William Poland says, what is your eBay store name? It's value trends. One word, V A L U E T R E N D Z at the end. Let's see. Let's see if I can get to non Daisy Duke. <laughs> discussion here um i had pro wings too and coasters from payless shoe source that's right that's all i could I never afford had the pro wings but we pro sure wings. as heck got our shoes from payless i mean if you had pro wings on people let you know more than they let other people know hey i have jordans right they let you know that you had pro wings uh tommy had zips and kangaroos love those I remember zips, but uh, I know. I'm gonna have to look all this. Stuff anyone up. remember underoos? No, that we're going way back, like okay. the Superman, Spider Man. Okay. okay. I mean, what's wrong with that? You're dating yourself. Yeah. Brian H says just shipped a nine pound item from Reno, Nevada to Tennessee via UPS Ground, and it costs seventy bucks. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You know, I just you know speaking about uh, that's nine pounds. Wait, did you do it? Uh like that, uh, that kind of threw me for a loop. 70 bucks. What are you shipping? But it's nine pounds. It doesn't matter what it, it is. It could be a huge box that has something very light in it. I'm, I just, the dimensions. He's saying it's nine pounds. No, the, the poundage has nothing to do with it. It's, you if just you said, said if it's very light. But if it's light, what I was trying to say is, even if it's very light, the dimensions can have a big factor in that. So I'd like right. to know the dimensions that you're using because, um, the weight really doesn't matter. In fact, what I like to do, if um, I don't want to mess with a large item and putting on the scale, I will um, turn as high as I can, go as high as I can with the weight and uh, do it. Look at this. Now we're going to Sizzler. 
Wait, what is this? What's happening? Oh my goodness. Gail says now you can buy oh, three. Oh, <laughs> Gail. Stop. And then Roman said, that's the best I could do since I can't be my electric bill. <laughs> Well, that's the least you can do, Roman. Oh I just gosh. gave you a money maker, the the Daisy Dukes and the tassels down at with the uh, vodka main... bottle. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you could have the kick me sign. You guys see that one down in uh, Vegas where they thank you, Gail. Have them kick the guy in a strategic location thank you, Roman. and for like 20 bucks. I don't know how that guy does it, can even walk afterwards. You guys are so no, but awesome. thank you guys. I appreciate that. All of you are, it's I'm not expected. I'm getting coffee and donuts all weekend. Brian H says just shipped a nine pound, but I'm trying to figure out what you're doing there because you're what? paying retail there. Um, I wanted to tell you guys about, I'm having a meeting. Actually, Jen and I are having a meeting with the FedEx guy again. Uh, yeah, I said FedEx and we met about a month, month and a half ago. And I told him, you know what? It's just not going to work for me. And since that time, we started selling larger and larger items, oh. and uh, the larger boxes can be shipped by FedEx, and maybe that'll work for that program if they're willing to come and pick them up. That's, you know, I think what kind of made me think that way is, and I don't know if you guys knew this, uh, I, I took 10 boxes, actually nine boxes to drop off of the UPS store location, and he said, you know, you're, that's your max. You cannot... Um, bring us any more than nine. I'm like, well, what if I go to a different UPS store? Well, you're circumventing the policy. Uh, you're really supposed to get a pickup. I didn't know anything about that with UPS, that there was a nine package limit. So I don't want, you know, as we grow this, we're getting more items sold and stuff, large items. It yeah. started to get me to think about FedEx. So we're having a meeting with him on Thursday right. afternoon uh, with that rep. And maybe, just maybe I'll do FedEx again with the non- poly bagged items that was just, just boxes. We don't have that many. That's the problem is I don't um, want to pay a, a fee weekly for pickup. Yeah. If we don't have a pickup. Well, that's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to see if it makes sense. Cause they yeah, do charge 20 know. bucks a week know. for the pickup. That's what he said. But the rates are going to be lower than what eBay is. So we'll see. I don't know. We'll see. He's going to give me a, a, some rates to work with that type of thing. No, I'll be um, writing down all the notes. Tommy said, no joke. Two years ago, I found a brand new pair of 1990s track sneakers in Marshalls that were sold in Kmart. Wow. And I did those, uh, to this day, I can't figure out how they got there, but how do they sell? Curious if someone had like a flashback and just had to have them. Um, but where did they come from? He said how Marshalls. They, no, I know. But how did Marshalls attain them if they were from Kmart? Old stock? I don't know. Maybe no. it's been sitting in the warehouse and they finally got to it. Come I don't on. Know. Luba. Uh, Chep, Pia, are you guys trying to challenge me? Uh, I'll just say Luba. <laughs> Never knew that someone can bid on eBay auction without registering on eBay. Had a scammer winning my auction, no payment. Now waiting four days to make a second chance offer. Yeah, there's guest accounts. Uh, I was doing some reading about that. And the guest accounts uh, eBay has set up. And unfortunately, you can't really do a whole lot. Thankfully, I think a lot of these guest accounts, they don't want an eBay account. Uh, maybe they found your item on Google and that's how they're there. They never intended on buying anything on eBay and they're just doing it to get that item purchased. So I think most people that do the guest accounts are just honest people that just don't want to have their own eBay account. Um, like, Tommy says out of stock option, but it doesn't work anymore. I, I, I figured that's what it was, but I mean, I never really, I think out of stock is good if you know you're going to get more stock. So it keeps it at zero, but I don't know why that has any effect on showing your solds. Um, but good, as long as it doesn't work anymore, because to me, if, if someone's going to get up in the camera and say, you know, Hey, I'm killing it on eBay. And then you go look at their store, they've got a hundred items and they sold five in the last 90. It's, uh, yeah, hard to, hard to be credible, you know? So that's why it's important for me. You know, I'm, uh, really busting my butt on the, on the eBay side because, uh, and I'll always be, cause I enjoy reselling, but it is what it is. Uh, and Roman says, Tommy, probably someone returned the, uh, them and put the wrong sneakers in the box. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, but how did it get to Marshall's? Um, let's see. Biff says people hide their sales so people can't see their bolos. So they, they just want to keep it to themselves. I mean, look, you guys can see what I'm selling. I mean, more power Why to you. Why does it need to be a secret? Mav Jag of Maverick. Well, because they, they want them now looking for those items and they're not available to them uh, on the rack or whatever. Mav Jag says, I was happy to get uh, out to be wearing pro wings from Payless my senior year after wearing 
uh, Kmart tracks for the first three years. Yeah, it's. Yeah. It was rough back then. Yeah. We were all broke. <laughs> How are you broke? No, I was broke <sighs> when I was younger. So I was broke when my dad was alive. Yeah. I'm... And then my dad passed away from a very tragic accident when I was 12. And we then got very rich, got very well taken care of by his company. And um, that's why she's, and this is a little secret. She's not very good with money because she, you know, it was after she was 12, this happened. So she basically didn't need to be very good with money. So she doesn't really get to, uh, to, you don't have to spill all the beans. No, no, but she doesn't really get to say, yeah, I know where you're coming from with those pro wings because I doubt after all that happened, you had pro wings. I did. See? Okay. So that's, that's what I was trying to get to. But prior to, we were very poor. My mom would buy Christmas gifts or, or just things in general on a whim. She would go to the store and she would hide them in the trunk so that my dad wouldn't find out. And then we'd come out and say, hey, where's that new dress you bought us? And um, my mom would just give us the death stare because she didn't want my dad to know. Uh, so. so the cool stuff, out of, auction, uh, out of stock options, great if you want to build a listing with sales history. Example, uh, sellers who can uh, charge top money for a Nintendo Wii as their top search with about 1,000 sales in that one listing. Okay. Um. Tommy Bernard says a day in the life of a six figure seller that brings home minimum wage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, depending on your margins and I think, I think a good portion of sellers out there that are even watching don't even know where they're at with their margins. And it's really hard to do because eBay won't tell you um, even, even programs like, um, and it's one that I'm even uh, subscribed to. Uh, I need to, I, Personally, I'm going to get rid of mine because of my spreadsheet, but that is my reseller genie. They, of course, haven't sponsored the channel. And after me saying that, they'll probably never sponsor the channel. But honestly, um, I think they do tell you a margin, but they don't, unless they have all the information, like your supplies, what they're costing you, uh, your cost of goods, which you can put in there, but your supplies, um, different receipts that maybe you got to put in manually. Um, you know, your yard sale, um, totals, what, you, what did you spend at the yard sale? That type of thing. Um, my spreadsheet just does that fine. And yeah, I can't import all the data. I have to put it in manually, but you know, even if I'm selling, let's just say I'm selling 10 items a day. Um, at the end of the day, just think about it. If you're running a brick and mortar business, at the end of the day, you're kind of doing paperwork to close out the store, same kind of mindset. And it keeps you in tune with what you're actually doing with your margins. And, oh, I didn't know like the, the records. Perfect example, you know, listing all these darn records and yeah, they're selling for $5.99, $10.99. It's like, yeah, it doesn't seem like a lot, but if you consider what I paid, we're making pretty decent money on the, on the albums on the other store. So, you know, if I didn't have the data this morning, yeah, but if I didn't have the data, uh, I probably, yeah, but you know, if you consider that the album probably cost us 20 cents, but I've never heard of it in my life. Which one was it? Star Link or Star something or other. Oh, really? Okay. I think that was Star. I could look at it. I up. don't know. But it was a 70s album. Uh, let's see. Before my time. Only uh, cool stuff. I already read that. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up. Let's see. Oh, PTS Busy Girls. Treasure was telling you that she was using your titles to work from. Yep. You make a lot of money, but employees' insurance rent eats out a lot of money. Yep. Yes, it does. Um, where was this at now? Um, PTS treasures go up, up right there. Okay. PTS treasures work through your titles. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Glad to help. Um, Roman says it depends on how much they pay for the pallet. If it's local bin store with just one owner, their overhead is not as big if it's a nationwide Amazon bin store. Yeah, but you know, you're talking, I think eBay is probably the per perfect thing, even with their fees being so high. Um, on a brick and mortar, you're not making, you know, 40, 50% margins because of all that. Um, Brian says, what is your go-to favorite item to sell on eBay? 
if I could just pick one item to sell on eBay, though, I mean, I like video games and stuff. I mean, that's kind of cool, video game systems, but um, they're so hard to come by and find that it's just not that big of a deal. Um, but lately, it's just to me, I mean, whatever sells quicker at a good margin, I'm happy for. There's some days where I'm <laughs> convinced that his go to's are the heaviest, largest lately. shit he can find. So mm-hmm. that he can just sit back and watch me package it up. She was fi- she was fighting with a, a big a dehumidifier <laughs> that I picked up for five bucks, sold for like what? I just saw that dehumidifier. I don't even for. know, but all I know is it took the life right out of me. What did I sell that for? Uh, I sold that for seventy three plus shipping. So they, you know, one hundred twenty two dollars out the door. It's gonna. He puts it on the top rack. Yeah, you know the top rack. So I not only do I have to climb up a ladder to get to the top rack, but then it weighs a thousand pounds. Or she could wait until I get home and so say, here hey, I am down. trying to juggle it to get it off there and to get it down so I can secure it. And then finally, I <laughs> if only somebody could hear me when I'm in the garage. He was golfing, my by the way. Yeah. So. I'm trying to put it on the floor gently so that I don't drop it. <laughs> so it's going down each stair with me to get down. And this is why I think I need to put in a surveillance camera in the garage. To... I was cussing and not happy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Glenda Bavona says, I wanted to block that buyer also, but couldn't figure out how once I put your item number in the search. Yeah, I, I screwed up in that video. And that I wanted you guys just to look it up. and But I failed to remember that they block out the buyer's name if you're not the, the account holder. So I went in and I pinned the comment. So it's a top comment in that video. So if you go into that video again, you'll see in the top comment the the, the buyer's name that uh, tried to, well, they did scam me, really. Um, put the buyer's name in there. And uh, I just don't have it off the top of my head. I've you know been fielding e- uh, emails and people asking me, What's the name of the buyer? I refer him to that that pin comment because um, I really just don't want to spend every time. You know, it's not the easiest name to remember at the top of my head because it has a year behind it or something. But um, watch the video and check out the comment. Eddie says Thrift of Life just closes the eBay store and will focus on eBay and reselling consulting. Sales are so bad, a lot of sellers are throwing in the towel. Yeah, uh-huh. there are uh, sellers throwing in the towel. Um, again, thank, thanks to the, the, the tax refund situation, I think that's helping sales. Um, you know, you see reports all like all the time about, you know, banking this and economy that, and my thing is, you know, let's hope for the best, but let's just be realistic that, you know, it's, we're not in the best of times right now. And, uh, I could just imagine what the summer is going to be like without the tax return kind of bailout situation, but we'll see. Well, but it bails us out as sellers when you have that extra money coming into people. It doesn't bail me out to go buy groceries. Yeah, I don't well. get nothing like that. Uh, the, the hunter says, I'm glad you provided the scammer's name as a small seller. Uh, every fake return hurts. Yes, but even does. more so if it's a person who sold on eBay, mm-hmm. uh, like this person did, and they have 850 feedback. So how many people did they scam that just didn't bother with, you know, following up with comments or feedback of their own? So. I don't know. Hopefully it helps somebody. Um, I, I'd love nothing more to be uh, in that room when that person tries to buy an item and says, nope, blocked. And then they're trying to figure out why they can't buy multiple items because they've been blocked by multiple people. Um, Roman says those Amazon bin stores owners are smart. They'll lure in customers by putting good stuff in the bins first couple of months after they open the new store, then start putting bad stuff in the bins. Mm-hmm. Or what's happening, Roman, is they're now cherry picking those bins Mm -hmm. to help their bottom line and selling those on ebay instead of selling or facebook marketplace or some other place where they can get more money yeah so i'm selling that to my buyers for you know in the store for ten dollars but i could turn around and sell it for a hundred you know and it's tempting to do that but you're hurting um you know you're killing your reselling business the resellers that go there to buy your items uh are going to be well you know what we have four or five other bin stores in the in the town this isn't my first place to go to anymore because their stuff just isn't what it used to be. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Eddie says, uh, Shed Flip said, list perfectly will have auto delist 
for sold items across multiple platforms soon. I know a lot of these sites are working on that. I think uh, Prime Lister is doing that as well. I would really, really like that. Yeah. But to me, uh, eBay wins every time. So look, we don't, the way I do it with Mercari is when I put an item on Mercari, it has to have been sitting in my eBay store at least 30 days anyway. So it isn't like there's a mad rush to buy this item on eBay. If I sell the item, I'll go into my phone, go onto eBay and remove it. That's just the way we do it with Posh. We really don't have that kind of a problem. Uh, it may happen, but you know, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, let's see. I'm trying to catch up, but I'm so long winded. You know, I just get, I fall behind again. No way. Yes. Uh, that's breaking news. <laughs> breaking news. Um, uh, Tommy says thrift, uh, a life is not step stopping because of sales. He has chronic pain. I don't even know who that is. Who's that um, about? some thrift store that's closing down. Aww. Uh, mom knows treasures. MKT FedEx was super cheap for huge 36 inch box. It was big Santa Claus. So uh, it was a big Santa Claus that you sent. Well, yeah, I mean, they have some good rates, but they will hit you with extra fees oh, if they're yeah. not pri uh, packaged right. So uh, we're going to have a meeting with the, the local FedEx rep out in uh, the Vegas area, and we're going to see. You know, I kind of it kind of makes you feel obligated to sign up, but I'm not going to sign up if it doesn't make any sense. That isn't. That's just not me. I'm not going to spend extra money if uh, it's just going to be extra work to deal with. Uh, Tommy says sales are only bad for people that don't understand eBay and don't adapt daily to changes in demand and trends. Yes. So that's why I think, you know, we say this a lot on this channel lately and that's getting uncomfortable and it's something I have to remind myself. Yes, this isn't fun. That big dehumidifier that you had to maybe bring down step by step. It's not fun. It's not. And I'm not complaining, but I am complaining because it's up on the top shelf. We can do better. Right. Maybe, maybe I'm going to keep sourcing the way it's I do. It's not about but... the source. It's not about the, okay. the, the item. Please place it in a place that I'm not going to break my already broken back. So here's the, here's, here's what happens when I do that. So I have a, one available spot in my rack up here, right? I could find you other available so, spots. So then if I want it to be down here, now I got to move two boxes down here, put them up here. And then put that one down there. And now I've got to, got to go back into both SKU numbers and the listings and change the location so you don't go, where's this item at? I can't find it. I don't want to have Is that it conversation. Is worth it for your wife's? Or just wait till I get home and let me mess with it. And that's exactly what I did. I put it down in the center of the garage. Yeah. Center of the garage and left it there. And those, after was, the live stream's done, I'm going to wrap it real quick, throw the label on, and I'm going to uh, take all those big packages in. <laughs> Um, see, Craig says, when I was a kid, I got my shoes from Boys Market Grocery Store. I never wore those shoes before I outgrew them. Wow. I don't know what brand was that. Um, Roman says, uh, John, those Amazon bin store owners will rather sell good stuff themselves and put it in the bins, which is the way most of the, uh, they try to run. And then sometimes they will put good stuff in the bins. Yeah. I agree. Uh, Thomas says, Jenna, John has big insurance policy. If you get hurt on the job, I'm thinking. <laughs> No, I wish I'll let her take it easy. If she hurts herself, I'll let her relax and take it easy. Uh, but she still has to do the live stream when I'm gone. Um, no one designs says, I bet Jenna's verbal words was. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I said. Uh, that's why I sliced the ball into someone's house because I was distracted. I, I felt the you negative eyes. Hear his ears here. must have been. For ringing. all those who want to block that buyer, here it is right there. Oh. Hidden Creek Gardens 2013. There it is. Um, Negotiate your life insurance. That's for sure. I think I yeah. may do that. Hustle and grow. Places like Marshall's buy trucks from places like Kmart that went out of business. It's similar to Ollie's. They sell liquidation like us, but it's new or slightly damaged or irregular. Are there still Kmart's? Here's uh, Tommy says, anyone struggling with reselling should watch Craigslist Hunter. One of the best and most knowledgeable on YouTube by far. No fake stuff. 10,000% uh, legit. Yeah. I like I like Pete. He's good. Um, Rosel Diaz says, I sold a printer. The, the client is returning it, but he went to disassemble it without my authorization says that the motherboard is damaged. Uh, mm -mm. Well, that is a 50% well, reduction. His, in uh, 
refund. Yeah, don't refund the original shipping if you charged it uh, on the side and 50% refund. They're not allowed to do that, okay? They can't get in there and, and especially if they'd say in a message that's what they're doing. Um, no, that's not good. Um, let's see, PTS Treasures, Jenna, I'm in the hub's office, so he has to help me pull the top boxes, but she didn't wait. She knows it's coming home. No, and I, I get impatient and I just want it done. I don't like to be interrupted when I'm in a workflow. And so I was trying to get it done and at least get it in a area that was manageable for the bubble wrap and then the, the poly, but it, I didn't realize it was so heavy. So Brian, maybe place items, uh, heavier items on the bottom shelf. But the problem is, is that again, I'm finding the available slot that's in the rack because um, that's the spot that I have open. Again, if I want to make room on the bottom, there's other heavy, bigger stuff on the bottom anyway. I will help you. No, no, I don't want to go through all that. So just let me deal with it. When So if you don't want to deal with the bigger items, just leave it. And then I will pull it down. It's not that I don't want to. It's that I just physically If you can't, can't, that's even better. If you can't, or I'll even give you the option of not wanting to, I will deal with it <laughs> when I get home or if I'm not here. Uh, Craig says, John, they were just generic made USA shoes. I'll be wearing them if they were still around. Okay. Mm. Sometimes, you know, you find a pair of shoes that you just like. Oh, yeah. I didn't dislike the pro wings, but I didn't, I didn't like the fact that they were you know, make it a point that I was wearing pro wings in, in school, you know. Annabelle uh, says there's only three Kmarts left. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Any mm. blue lights I want? Remember the blue lights? Blue light specials. Yeah. Oh, wow. And they did, they'd make sure that everyone knew we're having a blue light special. Yeah. Um, no one designs has got eight sales after hitting the, uh, the like 30 minutes ago and buying Jenna coffee and made a profit. What? Awesome. That's awesome. Nice. Eight sales is Roman's monthly goal. <laughs> so we're kind of whittling down to the end. We're an hour and 36 minutes in. Uh, with no one designs says, don't worry, Roman. John will donate his Daisy Duke shorts. <laughs> yes. Only if you promise to wear them out on Fremont Street. That's right. With the and tassels. We, and we get to film it. And you got to dance next to the, the lady that's out there, the old lady out there with the tassels. And uh, that would be awesome. Um, but no, honestly, though, thank you guys for being with us again. Another uh, great live stream. Uh, but, you know, without your being involved in some of the, the, the great comments and uh, you guys drive this this program, I can only talk about 20 minutes without just saying the same thing over and over again. So uh, thank you for for being here with us. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the super chats. She's going to go and coffee she's going to get her coffee. Donut. And yeah. Got the donut and, uh, you know, just want to thank you guys. Oh, check who uh, was watching this whole time. We got Pete Craigless Hunter. Uh, so thank hey. you for, thank you for being here with us. Yeah. The shadows. Yeah. So thank you with uh, Ruby and honey hanging out, watching the live stream. So, so thank you for uh, being here with us guys. Uh, just want to, you know, really tell you, you know, yard sale season is coming. Many of you guys are going to be going to the yard sales tomorrow. Uh, I will be one of those people and just keep in mind, you don't have to bring home everything that looks good or promising. Do your homework, use your phone. Don't worry about what that's that person next to you or the person at the yard sale is, is thinking of you. Make sure you're make, make sure you're buying something that's going to sell and not going to sit. So make sure that you're not buying bad and, uh, you know, trying to figure that all out. Hopefully I gave you some direction. It's yet another example of how sometimes flipping ain't easy. And I want you guys to have an excellent weekend, and we will see you guys have soon. Have a great weekend, guys. We love you. Yes, and we'll talk to you guys on Monday.